In this video, we're going to discuss JSON Web Tokens in relation to web security. The main purpose of this video is to provide some theoretical background into JWTs. So what are they? How are they formatted? How do the signatures work? How do vulnerabilities arise? And then also, what kind of tools can we use to work with them and to automate attacks? So we won't be covering any of the practical labs in this video. But it does mean that in future videos, we won't need to recap all of the background information. We won't need to explain what tools are and how to use them because they'll be covered today. So we'll essentially start off by reading through the background information on the Port Swigger Web Security Academy. If you've already read through this theory or you know this background information, you can skip to the second half of the video where we go through some practical demonstrations. So we're going to look at how design issues and flawed handling of JSON web tokens can leave websites vulnerable to a variety of high severity attacks. As JWTs are most commonly used in authentication, session management and access control mechanisms, these vulnerabilities can potentially compromise the entire website and its users. And here we have a diagram showing a JSON web token and then the decoded format and how it's being used to authorize users on a website. So JWTs are a standardized format for sending cryptographically signed JSON data between systems. They can contain any kind of data, but are most commonly used to send information claims about users as part of authentication, session handling, and access control mechanisms. Unlike with classic session tokens, all of the data that a server needs is stored client-side within the JWT itself. This makes JWTs a popular choice for highly distributed websites, where users need to interact seamlessly with multiple backend servers. So here we have an example JWT, and it's color-coded to show its three parts, which are the header, the payload, and the signature, which are each separated by one of these dots. And the first two parts, the header and the payload, are Base64 URL encoded JSON objects. The header contains metadata about the token itself, so for example, the algorithm that's used. And the payload contains the actual claims about the user. So we can decode this token up here to reveal this information about the user, so that is the payload. And then the header would be the type of algorithm that's being used and some other information. And then we have the signature at the end. In most cases, this payload data can be decoded by anybody who has access to the JWT, so it shouldn't be used to store sensitive information. The server that issues the token typically generates the signature by hashing the header and the payload. In some cases, they also encrypt the resulting hash. Either way, this process involves a secret signing key. This mechanism provides a way for servers to verify that none of the data within the token has been tampered with since it was issued. So a signature is directly derived from the rest of the token, and changing a single byte of the header of the payload results in a mismatched signature. Without knowing the server's secret signing key, it shouldn't be possible to generate the correct signature for a given header or payload. The JWT specification is very limited as it only defines a format for representing information claims as adjacent objects that can be transferred between two parties. In practice, JWTs aren't really used as a standalone entity. The JWT spec is extended by both the JSON web signature and JSON web encryption specifications, which define concrete ways to actually implement JWTs. In other words, a JWT is either a JWS or a JWE token. When people use the term JWT, they're almost always talking about a JWS token. JWEs are very similar, except the actual contents of the token are encrypted rather than just encoded. JWT attacks involve a user sending modified JWTs to a server in order to achieve a malicious goal. Typically, this goal is to bypass authentication and access controls by impersonating another user who's already been authenticated. The impact of JWTs is usually severe. If an attacker is able to create their own valid tokens with arbitrary values, they may be able to escalate their own privileges or impersonate other users. JWT vulnerabilities typically arise due to a flawed JWT handling within the application itself. The various specifications related to JWTs are relatively flexible by design, allowing website developers to decide many implementation details for themselves. This can result in them accidentally introducing vulnerabilities even when using battle-hardened libraries. These implementation flaws usually mean that the signature of JWT is not verified properly. This enables an attacker to tamper with the values past the application via the token's payload. Even if the signature is robustly verified, whether it can be truly trusted relies heavily on the server's secret key remaining secret. If the key is leaked in some way, or can be guessed or brute forced, an attacker can generate a valid signature from any arbitrary token, compromising the entire mechanism. Okay, some of the background stuff out of the way, let's take a look at a quick demo. This is a Python script, which is just simply gonna create a token. So you can see here, we've got a secret key, it's set to integrity, and then we create a payload, which has a user ID, a username and a role, which is currently user. 
And then we create the JWT. So we're using JWT encode. It takes in the payload, which is this JSON object. It takes in the secret key and then the algorithm that's going to be used. And it's going to print out the token and then it's going to verify the token and make sure it's okay. And that's basically just going to check and make sure that if you try to decode the token with the correct secret key and knowing the correct algorithm, that it will be a valid token. However, what happens then if we simply decode that JSON objects, we split the token by the dot because we know it's separated the header, the payload, and the signature. And then we change the payload. So we're actually going to replace role user with role admin. So we're going to do all that, and that's our modified token. But notice what we're not doing. We're not re-signing it with that secret key. So we're actually modifying the payload data. But what should happen then is that the signature should no longer be valid because we haven't re-signed the token. And that means whenever we send it back to the verify token method, it should return and say there was a signature mismatch. So let's try it. Let us run the Python scripts. We get our original token, which is created. It sends that token off for verification and it says the token is valid. But then we modify the token and it checks again to make sure it's valid. And it isn't because, of course, we've modified the payload data without actually making sure that the signature is correct. So this is a good opportunity to go and have a look at some of the tools that we can use to look at these JWTs and how we can modify them. First of all, I'm just going to take the original token, which is valid. Bear in mind that obviously part of this is just base64. So you could take a copy, for example, of this and say echo and then pipe that through to base64-d to decode. And now we can see that this is the username. The role is user. Let's try that again with the modified token. So we'll echo that base64 string into base64-d. And you can see here then that the role this time is admin. Okay, cool. Let me take the full token. I'm going to go and paste this into jwt.io, which is a very popular site for checking this stuff. Notice that whenever I paste that in, it says invalid signature. But what's interesting about this site is if I type in anything here, so if I type I, it says it is signature verified. And it's saying signature verified for everything we type in here. But if I paste this in again, invalid, okay. Let me change that again. So it shows verified. Let me paste it. There we go. It's invalid, okay. Integrity. So this is a correct one. And let me paste it. I noticed this time it didn't show invalid signature whenever I pasted it. So this is the right key. But I don't like the way it's not easy to just kind of modify this and see whether the signature is correct. Maybe there's something I'm missing here. Also, another thing is if we want to go and try and change some values here, like change this to admin, we can do that. But what quite often happens to me is that this just like disappears off the screen and I can't actually see the data. So yeah, there's a couple of ways anyway. Let's take the token that we modified. So if I paste this in here, here's our signature, integrity, paste it in, invalid. So again, if I type something in, it'll straight away show that it's invalid. But if we paste it again, it's invalid. And if we paste the first one, it is signature verified. Another tool I like to work with is Cyberchef. So if you go in here and search JWT, we've got sign, decode, and verify. We can paste our token in here. And there we go. We've just decoded that. We could start modifying things in here as well. We can go to sign here and try some different secrets. Or let's do verify. Actually, we'll do verify. We've got our token in there. It says invalid. Okay, we'll type in integrity and it's still showing invalid, but there we go. As soon as we get in the right key, it is now valid, which means we could now use this key to go and create our own JWT. Let's take this one. Let's do sign, paste this in here, we'll change this to admin. And then we put in the secret here as integrity and make sure we're using the correct algorithm. I think that is the one that we chose. It is. Yep. So this result will actually be a valid signature. If we go and paste this in here, there we go. The role is admin. The key is integrity and it is a valid signature. I've moved over to Hattrix here, which has a page on JWTs. Hattrix is a great resource if you are short on time and you just need to quickly find out what tools and techniques exist to do whatever attack you're trying to do. And the first thing it mentions here is running the JWT tool. So this is a really great tool for automating attacks against JSON web tokens. As you can see, it can validate, forge, scan, and tamper with JWTs. And some functionality includes checking the validity of a token, testing for various known exploits, scanning for misconfigurations and known weaknesses, brute forcing the secret key, and much more. We've got some installation instructions here and then some basic usage guide, which just tells us we can run the JWT tool with our JWT, and then we can also provide additional arguments for tampering, for running exploits, 
for brute force in our key, etc. They also have a page on common flags which tells you some of the various options that you can use and what kind of parameters you want to provide with it. So I'll leave these links in the description to all the tools that we cover in this video and the documentation and stuff like that. But let's go and take a quick look at the tool. I'm not going to go over it in too much detail because we'll try to use it throughout the Port Swigger Labs as we come across different vulnerabilities. But let's just take a look at it. Okay, so let's grab the valid token that we generated and do JWT tool, paste that in, and it decodes the token. So we can see the header values, the algorithm that's being used, the type, and then we've got our token payload values. So our ID, name, and role, and then some common timestamps that might be in this payload. And let's do that again and do dash H. So this will bring up all of our help options. We can do our various exploits. We can try doing some of these fuzzing. We can tamper as well, dash T, set sign options with dash S or exploits with dash X. So if we're using tamper, we need to either use the signature, so either find that secret key or to use one of the exploits. Let's try it out. We'll do dash T, it asks us what do we want to do, token header values, so it doesn't actually give an option to, oh, continue the next step, zero. All right, token payload values, so I want to change the role to admin, and then that's it, it's changed that, now we can add or delete, let's do zero to continue, there we go. So it gave us a tampered token, but we didn't actually specify the sign-in method, so signature is unchanged, which means, of course, this isn't invalid token. It's just like what we did in the Python demo where we modified the payload but we didn't actually do anything to fix the signature. We're not going to use any of these exploits yet so actually let's just try one more thing. We'll try to crack the secret key. So you can see here we can use dash C to crack it and then we can provide either a password or a dictionary. So I'm going to do dash C and then I'm going to do dictionary as user share wordless rock you. All right, so I sped up the process for you. That took about 15, 20 seconds to go through 14 million passwords. Apparently, Integrity is a super secure password to use. But yeah, it told us it couldn't find a password. It suggests some rules we could use with Hashcat to make it more complex. Let us just verify then that if we were to pass in a password instead and say Integrity, that it comes back and says that is the correct key. So the final thing I want to show here requires us to have a website that's using a JWT. So I've opened up the first challenge, but we're not going to solve it. We're just going to go and log in here with our credentials, Wiener and Peter. And then we'll go over to Burp Suite. And you can see that our previous request didn't have any JWT in it. But now if we have a look at this Get My Account, which is after the login, we do have a JWT. Now, one thing you can do here is if we double click here, that'll get the first part of that payload. And we can go over to the inspector. I notice it's automatically decoded that. So it's showing this key ID and the algorithm is RS256. We can do the same with the second part. And that shows that the ISS is Portswigger. The sub is Wiener and the expiration as well. And then we could grab that final bit, but remember this is a signature, not a base64 encoded payload. So that's not decoding that for us. Now, one thing to mention here is that we've got a couple of extensions. I've currently got the JSON Web Tokens extension. So let us actually send one of these requests to the repeater. Send that one to the repeater. And then notice we've got JSON Web Tokens here. So it's detected this. And if we click on it, it shows us all that same stuff. So you can see here the KID, the algorithm, we've got our payload data, and then we've got our signature down here. And we've actually got some options to try different attacks here. This is the non-attack. So it's gonna use a non-algorithm with various case sensitivities. And this is relying on that fact that we saw earlier where the implementation can vary so much from site to site because of the loose specification that having non in lowercase might be completely different to having non in capital letters in terms of the way it's processed. And we've also got some options here to modify the signature. So you can recalculate, you can keep the original, you can sign with a random key pair, or you can load the secret or key from a file. So we could basically modify some of this information. We could change the username. We could add another field in here to say like is admin is true. But let's just take a look at another extension. We don't want to go through the attacks in this video. I want to keep this quite simple. And I don't have this extension yet at the moment. So I'm going to go into the B app store. I'm going to search for JWT. I already had it searched for there. And then the other one is this JWT editor, which is actually rated slightly higher than the JSON web tokens one. All right, we install that. Let's go back to our repeater. 
And now we have another tab, JSON Web Token. Looks quite similar. Here we can see the serialized JWT. Here we've got our header, we've got our payload, and we've got our signature here. We've got an attack option where we can try the non signing algorithm. We can sign and we can encrypt. Again, quite similar options, it looks like, to what we have with the JSON Web Tokens. You can also access these directly through these tabs. So you have this JSON Web Token one. So we could just paste in a JWT here. Let's actually do our Python demo. So we could take a copy of this and it says invalid key. Let's do integrity and there we go. It's showing that it's verified. However, we can't modify the token here. So we would need to actually modify the token before we paste it in here and then use the key to re-sign it. We've also got this new tab, JWT editor keys. So we can go and create keys in here and add in passwords and things like that. And they'll be able to be used with the JWT editor extension that we installed. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. We've introduced the concept of JSON web tokens, talked about the format and some of the vulnerabilities that can arise. We'll go into this in much more detail as we start to cover the labs. And we also looked into some ways that we can work with JWTs. So looking at JWT.io and Cyberchef, the JWT tool and some burp extensions as well. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the first lab, which is JWT authentication bypass via unverified signature. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks. Bye -bye.